Hi, y'all. Welcome back to 110% Athlete, Breaking Your Slump. I am Dr. Jess Scarza, here to introduce an amazing special guest that we have today. And Hello, I'm have... Adam Powell. Um, <laughs> and thank you, Doc. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. I am lucky enough. I run the uh, Texas Junior Stars program, which is our, uh, our youth travel program in the city of Austin in the metro area. Pretty much stretches from Kyle to... Georgetown, Liberty Hill, and North. Um, we have about 500 players in our program. Oh, wow. About 140 of them are playing travel hockey, and uh, it's just growing every year, as you can see. That's awesome. So you're one of the main coaches? Yes, I coach. Uh, I run the, the Junior Star program, okay. so I'm in charge of the the travel side of the the uh, the hockey experience in Austin. So I guess the I guess the, the elite, right, the, yeah. the players, there's tryouts. You go through those, those emotions. Um you know, it's a, it's up. You play, if anyone who's played youth sports at, at a travel level, uh, a lot of up and downs. Oh yeah. Ups and downs, a lot of emotions, mm -hmm. um, a lot of characters, <laughs> and uh, it's fun though. I wouldn't trade it for anything. How did you even get into that? Well, I played hockey, so I played okay. hockey my whole life. I was born and raised in Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, if you don't play hockey there, you're gonna be pretty bored. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I started when I was five, and. Uh, was lucky enough to play junior hockey in Vancouver, British oh, wow. Columbia, and then uh, played my Division One college hockey in, at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And then uh, from uh, there, I had a five-year pro career, uh, Corpus Christi Ice Rays, wow. where I spent most of my time. And then I uh, <clears throat> had a couple brief stints with the Houston Arrows, which is pretty much, uh, if you're comparing apples to apples, got AAA baseball. Yeah. AHL is the AAA oh, okay. of hockey. It's what the Texas Stars are. Yeah. Didn't spend too much time there, but uh, and then I kind of uh, I retired after five years of pro and kind of got right into coaching. Started wow giving back and and I love it. I you know I keep telling myself this year is gonna be my last and this year is gonna be my <laughs> last and it's but it's it's fun because I feel like I was lucky enough to be raised in a sport that kind of had right. that teaches good quality and good characteristics. And mm -hmm. I feel like I ended up okay in this world. <laughs> uh, and I want to make sure that our youth have an opportunity for the same. That's thing. awesome. Yeah. So even as a player, did you know that you always wanted to be a coach? No, 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 uh, no not till I got older. Okay. Uh, when I was playing juniors in college and pro and you start doing a lot of uh, stuff in the community, yeah. whether it's give backs or, you know, when we we're in, in Vancouver, I think we worked at a subway as like a guest <laughs> appearance, but right. um, I started, a couple of years in pro I won most community minded and most oh, did awesome. the most in the community and and then from there when you're doing that you meet a lot of people and right when I was in Corpus I met uh, uh all the youth hockey players and there wasn't much ice in Corpus so when we didn't have ice with the pro team yeah the youth didn't have ice so oh. my first year coaching was we, we had a team called the South Texas Rebels okay and uh, it was a, a group of kids from Austin, Laredo, Corpus Christi, Rio Grande Valley. And uh, we would just kind of go and travel around. One of the moms bought like a van. Yeah. And we'd go to different tournaments. Um, oh, that's awesome. And that was kind of my introduction into coach. It was all midget age player. Midget's a, <laughs> yeah. I know it's frowned upon these days saying that word, but that's an age bracket. That's right. the older age group in yeah. hockey. Um, and it was a, a wild year. I mean, wild is in. Our goalie got shot and almost died. Um, wow. Yeah, he was trying to, this is a true story, he's trying to steal a pair of Nike shoes, and the oh guy my. came out and shot him. Uh, sawed off shotgun in the chest. He's lucky to be alive. Wow. Um, but it kind of turned his life around for the better. Yeah. I guess that usually would. But uh, And then right after that year, me and my wife decided that we are going to move up to Fairbanks, Alaska. We didn't have any kids. Yeah. Um, we would spend summers there when we were playing pro. And uh, I got an opportunity to kind of run some youth camps up there for a year, and, oh, and cool. we did it. And kind of the rest is history. It led one thing led to another, and uh, there's there's been years I've coached three travel teams. Wow, uh, pre kids, pre kids, okay. <laughs> but uh, so I'd be traveling every weekend. That's awesome. Insane. Have you noticed since the beginning of your coaching career till now, and even from when you played, even? the different styles of coaching or how would you first describe what your coaching style is? Maybe let's go there. Well, I mean, yeah, my coaching style, I don't know. I, I like to consider a little different. Um, I like there to be a fun factor. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's the, I do. I think that's the most important part when you're playing sports is 
you got to enjoy the experience. Right. Now, when I say fun, I don't say, you know, let the kids do whatever they want. Right. Don't hold them accountable. Uh, I got pretty strict team rules. Uh, really, I want the kids to not like, you know, I usually coach 14, 15, 16 year olds. Yeah. So I want to kind of teach them to start doing stuff on their own. For sure. Um, so last year, I coached a 16 U team. Um, and it was the first time I've coached 16 U in, in Austin. Yeah. And we took the kids and we traveled without parents. Okay. Uh, and it was the first time we've done it as an association. It's what we're used to doing in Fairbanks. Right. Um, and you give them that responsibility. You put three kids in a room, you get bed, you know, yeah. we go around, do room checks, tell them when breakfast is, what right. time to be on the bus. Um, but, you know, at the end of the, of the of the season, when parents come up to you and you're like, hey, my kid really took yeah. that next step in becoming, you know, a young adult. Right. That is kind of what I want them to get out of it because That's awesome. all these kids want to go to the next level. For sure. The next level, you're on your own. Oh, yeah. Um, and you got to learn how to be on time, be accountable. Yeah. Realize that. You might not always like your coach, but guess what? Right. You're not always going to like your boss. True. And unless you don't want a job, you're going to have to learn how to deal with things. Absolutely. And I like to teach kind of life through hockey, and I think that's super important. I do, too. I think that most athletes in any sport, hockey or any other one, the transferability that the coach's role in impact in the sport really is transferable to any other aspect of their world. Relationships between peers parents, coworkers later, I think everything is viable. Like it's, it's huge in those pivotal years, especially the years that you're talking about that you have access to. Was there a specific coach for you that gave you that foundation or did you have to learn that on your own across time? Uh, I think a lot of them. Um, okay. there, I got great. I was lucky. I had great coaches yeah. in all phases of my youth career, even into junior hockey. And when I say junior hockey, if you're not familiar, junior hockey is like uh, that level between youth hockey and yeah. if you want to go play college hockey. Okay. There's that junior hockey where most players go, unless you're a complete badass, <laughs> most players go play junior hockey before they get a scholarship. Okay. Um, so in junior hockey, I, I learned a lot. It was the first time I was on my own. And, uh, you know, Rob Prophet was a huge, mm -hmm. huge mentor for me, still is. Uh, he's the general manager of the Fairbanks Ice Dogs. Yeah. Um, and I remember there was a, a Christmas community give back. So let's let's rewind now. I'm a little younger than I was <laughs> winning all those community awards. Um, but uh, there's the Kiwanis Club, right? And they always sell Christmas trees. And we had a role as a team that I think it was Christmas Eve or a couple of days before we were going to go help load yeah. trees into people's cars, like wear our jerseys. And it was kind of our community give back. Well, I skipped it. I'm not going to do it. Nope. I'm Adam Powell. I don't have to do it. I'm the local <laughs> boy. I'm the hero. Oh, I'm not going to do this. So. He didn't say anything. We had a couple practices after Christmas, and I think we had like a New Year's game. Right. And I had family visiting from Texas in Alaska at that time, and they'd never seen me play hockey oh, wow. in my life, ever. They'd yeah. never seen me. They were super excited. I didn't know they were there. Right. They were, it was a surprise. They were going to be at the game, and I was going to see them afterwards. Oh, had no. no idea they were there. So I'm going around in warm-ups, and we get to the game, and my line goes, and he's like, Powell, sit down. Oh, sit no. Down. And I didn't get a shift that game, but Coach Rob, took yeah. four or five bench miners, meaning he was just yelling at the ref, like, yeah. hey, give me a penalty because I want to punish somebody. Yeah. And I would have to serve the penalty. So I'd have to, no shifts, just skate across, serve a penalty, go back to the bench. He did that four times. Oh, wow. So you talk about the effects and the yeah. impact a coach can have on you. Five, six years later, I'm doing everything in the community. Uh, and that's somebody I still yeah. call. And, and we actually, now he sometimes calls me for advice. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, everything's everything relates with youth sports and growing up and being an adult. School, um, I mean, I don't know what my grades would have been if yeah. I didn't have to have certain grades for hockey because school wasn't something I loved, but right. I loved hockey. Yeah. My parents knew it. So you have to have this. You miss a class. Absolutely. You miss practice. You miss practice. You miss game. And that's how I was raised. And, and I wish I was more... I wish that was the way it was now. Things have changed. Dang, you gave me some goosebumps over there. Yeah. It is pretty incredible to watch the level of influence that our coaches have on children and then the development of that structure across time. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, have you noticed across your careers coaching different mentalities in athletes and how it was back when you played and to what current day looks like? Because I've seen it even through just the last two years with the pandemic alone. 
-hmm. but the transferability of like the mindset with an athlete and what they're willing to push through, tolerate with, and even the team in itself, because your role isn't just to one athlete, it's to the whole team. It's the, I mean, (laughs) I think I'm on year 14. I was thinking about that on the drive over here. The amount of ways all of our youth and sports and schools have changed. I mean, I'm a completely different coach. I've had to relearn how to teach the game. Yep. Um, Because when I first got in it, it was even the way USA Hockey and instructed us to teach the game versus how they are now. Right. It's completely different. It was a coach standing there, Mm -hmm. maybe one or two kids moving at a time. Most practice, you were standing around. For sure. And now it's the the USA ADM model. It's we need more kids moving. And I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, More kids moving, more kids developing, more kids playing hockey. Um, but I used to be the guy who would take a penalty every couple games as a coach, yelling at the ref, wasting my energy on that. I was a hothead. Um, and I don't think it worked really well. Um, now I try to channel that a little different because the kids have changed. You have to approach, you literally have to know if I have a roster of 19 kids, I need to know exactly what's going through each one of those, what's going on in each 19 players lives because There could be a divorce at home. Right. There could be school trouble. There could be a kid Mm -hmm. going through puberty. There could be so many different aspects that if you don't know what's going on, you treat them all the same, you have no chance. You have zero chance. And that's, you know, I was lucky enough to have coaches who knew what was going on in my life. I had a pretty good upbringing. Yeah. Um, I was a little turd. Like I was, (laughs) I was always seemed to be the one who was getting in trouble. And, but coaches knew that hockey was kind of my heart, like, that let all like, the energy out and it was mm-hmm. the thing keep me on the straight and narrow and why I'm not in jail now and sitting here with you. Right. Um, that I had those coaches who, who cared enough to give me that energy. And that's kind of why we want to, you know, as an association leader and, sure. you know, um, that we have great coaches now across our association that really do care about the kid first mm-hmm. um, and the athlete first and developing them. But I think most importantly, we want everyone to be good people at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. So as a coach, what is the best way to influence these children? The, the children these days are athletes, if you will. You got to be involved. You have to be able to relate. Like yeah. I think my maturity level or lack thereof <laughs> um, when I'm around the players uh, really benefits me. So yeah. I always, um, you know, depends on your assistant coach, right? I, I really depends on who you're matched up with. Uh, you know, in Fairbanks, I was lucky enough. I coached with a kid named Robert Thomas. We call him RT. <laughs> and if I had 19 players, he'd be the 20th player. Like he was a kid. I'd count him on the bus. Mm -hmm. I'd do room checks for him. He was like, he was one of the the kids, right? And now I have a a coach, his name is Jonathan Berkowitz. Um, And we're like children together, but I can play a different role with Berkowitz because he's he's not RT, right? He's very, very smart. Yeah. Very, um, can draw plays really well. He's Mm -hmm. a very good teacher of the game and mine's more of teaching the, um, you know, how to be a hockey player and right. how to act and what to look like and what you're supposed to, what, what you give back to the game of hockey when you're a hockey player. Yeah. That's really what I do. And he's the X's and O's. So it's, you kind of, it differs. It differs each coach you have, but For sure. I think it also, you want to make sure you have a good relationship with your coaches. And, yeah. and I've been lucky enough to have that. I haven't coached with anyone. I'm like, oh, this is brutal. Because if the coaches are having fun, the practice are going to be fun. Absolutely. If the practices are going to be fun, because mm-hmm. that's where you get better. Yep. Um, the kids are going to get better, and if you're getting better, then you'll win more games or have more success. So you talked about a couple different things. So one, I think a lot about how we're attending to the athlete, and we're talking more on visual presentation, verbal presentation, so hitting more on learning styles of these athletes in which they retain the information. So I've seen a lot of coaches that I've worked with in the past of how they're communicating, and it's more verbally auditory, and it's going in one ear and straight out the other. So talk, and then the words that they're using, the phraseology and linguistics that come out of coaches' mouths aren't always the best, most suitable way. And so how often are you paying attention to what you're saying and how it's being said? Yeah. Because I can say focus, mm-hmm. or then I'm just like, they, the tonality, I yeah. guess, is the biggest piece to that too. So like how often are you doing self-awareness for yourself as a coach to know how much of an impact that you're presenting to them. I, I think more than I know that I'm doing, yeah. right? I think each age group and each team you have is going to be different. You learn a, a unique approach that works for that mm-hmm. team. But uh, I think no matter what, you have to demand that respect. That no ma- You're not going to be coaching anyone if they right. don't respect you. For sure. Um, and when I say respect, doesn't mean I need to go out there and show them everything that I'm asking them to do. Right. 
but be able to give them real life lessons yeah. with what you're teaching. So if I'm teaching a breakout play, mm-hmm. being able to say, hey, you know, I just saw this. I was just talking to Colton Pareko from yeah. the St. Louis Blues, and he was telling me this breakout's been working. If it's yeah. working for him, it works for you. Just that's an example. Um, but they have to respect you. And I think as coaches to as leaders, you got to sure. stay current on what these kids yes. are going through and kind of what's new and trendy. And um, <laughs> luckily for me, I, I just have the, a unique set of like the kids always seem to come and tell me what's going yeah. on and, and they feel like I can be buddy, buddy. They also know they c- shouldn't tell me too much, <laughs> um, but right. you kind of get it all. And yeah. I don't really know how I do it. Um, you know, I think it's being outgoing being able to have a real conversation with these athletes. Yeah. Uh, that's super important. And uh, they got to res- you got to respect them as much as you want them to respect. I them. think that's a huge part of it. So what they're being modeled, what you're modeling and how they're modeling the behavior of what you're doing is a conscious effort that many people don't realize how conscious that it is. Cause it, I mean, we do a lot of things that has been habitual that you've learned across time. You've been fortunate to have some amazing mentors and coaches that have led you to where you are. And for the athletes that don't have that, that do have coaches that pick on them, on them or um, shun them to the side because for whatever reason, it could be a parent to coach conflict and now that the, the athlete's getting punished. How would you encourage that athlete to continue to keep playing? Or the one what that do they do? Maybe isn't having a good experience Correct. with a coach. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's tough. Um, you know, first you gotta, you gotta say something, yeah. right? You, there's, there's people you can talk to, right? Yeah. And that shouldn't be happening in youth sports anymore. I know it right. is, but... Uh, there's so many guidelines now. If if you're in a healthy organization, mm-hmm. uh, there shouldn't be a coach that's singling out kids for lack of skill set or right. whatever. You know, if a lack of effort, much different for thing. sure. But if a kid's behind the eight ball and developing at a different pace, yeah, um, you know, there shouldn't be that. How how to answer that? I don't know. That's tough. I mean, you got to talk to people in your organization. Yeah, the leaders. Um, you know, I, I've been lucky enough. I haven't had that too much. Yeah. Um, you know, more of the issues we have are with a lot of times, not even the kids. A lot of times it's the adults, <laughs> that uh, it is. you know, sports are great. And sometimes the adults can ruin them. Yep. And uh, I don't mean that as a bad thing. COVID has extremely changed the dynamic of youth yes. sports parents um, because a lot of them, what I've noticed is a lot of parents are working from home, mm-hmm. meaning they're working from the rink or the ball field or the soccer pitch or right. wherever they're at. And they have more time to dedicate with just bringing their kids to the rink. Yep. Then they're more involved. Mm-hmm. And then they think they have more of a say when it comes to how their kids developed as an athlete. Sure. And I don't always agree with that. I think the experts in the athletes field, whether it's hockey, softball, baseball, yep. are the experts for a reason. Mm-hmm. And they should be making those decisions. Now, when my kid plays soccer, which I didn't play growing up, I right. just and I was asked to coach, I just read the book that the association gave me. Yep. And I just had let the kids run. Now, there are five of you. <laughs> Um, but if I go to my sister's or my daughter's dance recital, I sit back and I'm a, I'm a parent. I watch because you put your kids in a program. You trust the coaches you until they give you a reason not to. Yeah. My daughter comes home with a smile or my son comes home with a smile. Let them be because all the energy that your parents or your coaches are, are, are giving to the parent that's complaining about player ice time or the way he yells on the bench is oh, yeah. taken away from time and energy that your kids should have. Absolutely. I know I have coached gymnastics and for myself, it was super challenging when my daughter got into the sport. I cared about it. I know a lot about it. And I'm like, well, if I just give her this couple techniques, like we'll just advance mm-hmm. to X amount of levels. Also, given my experience and expertise in the field that I'm in, I also know that that is not the right sure. approach whatsoever. But that innate competitor, when you're in your element, it's just like, but let me help you because you have so much passion towards it. I had to take a couple steps back as a parent to really realize, like, mm, I'm pushing too much. And the only thing that a parent should be saying with coaches or with the athletes is, well, not necessarily with coaches, but more with the athletes is, um, I really enjoyed watching you today. I loved watching you What play do you today. want for dinner tonight? Yeah. What movie do you it. want to go to? Exactly. How, you know, how's school? Yeah. Right? And you could talk about that. The one thing I told my wife when we had kids, I was like, I'm never coaching my kids. Not, yeah. not, not fully. I'll, you know, I'll help out on the, I'll right. be around them. They're eight and six. Um, and one thing we changed in our travel program was we don't have any parent head coaches anymore. Okay. And for, for us as association, we, 
we call that a big win because right. you could be the best parent coach ever. You're just, you're, you're, you're out to be brutalized, right? Yeah. No matter what your kid's going to be playing more than everyone else, or your kid's not going to be playing as much, mm -hmm. or your kid's going to resent you. Uh, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure, I think. And yep. if you have a, a non-parent head coach mm -hmm. who can make those tough decisions, you know, it's, it's way agree. better. And, and I just, and I want, I want to watch my kids enjoy the game and learn from the game, not Absolutely. learn from mom and dad. <laughs> I want them to learn that, you know, coach Johnny over there was a terrible coach. Well, Hey, better. Hey, Lennon. Yeah. Learn how to deal with it. Cause guess what? That same guy could be your boss in 10 years. You might not like him still, but that's right. how you support your family. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to step back. Uh, when you think you're the expert in the room, it's tough, it's especially when it's your own kids. But we, we have to remember as leaders, like we have to let them yeah. forge their path and it's tough. I would agree. One of the main questions that we get a lot is in sports, especially with coaching, you're down by several points. Okay. You're in your third period. How are you bringing back your team? As a coach, what are you doing to elevate the team to get them back into the right well, mind space? Hopefully it's not, you're not doing it on the spot. Like <laughs> I feel like your, your planning and your, your preparation going in, like Russell Wilson, my favorite quote is the separations and the preparation. Ooh, that's so um, good. And that's one of his, why he's one of my favorite athletes, even though he left my Seahawks or <laughs> subject. But, Ooh. um, you know, that's when you, that's when good teams shine, right? You might be down going into the fourth quarter of the third period. And, you know, are you, How's your fitness? How are your lungs? Can you keep going? Are you yeah. going to have more legs than the rest of the team? Are you mentally strong? Okay, you're down for a couple, but it's not the end of the world. Right. Um, but So I think it's all in how you prepared leading up to that. Do you put your players, do I as a coach put my players in those crappy situations mm. in practice and make them fight back? Do I give them the last 10 minutes of practice when they're totally gassed right. and tell them to do something super hard that makes them think, yeah. makes them exert themselves? So that when they get to that in the third period of overtime, that the, it's not, it's, it's another, right. it's muscle memory at that point. I love it. So we're talking about more of like making things as familiar as possible where it's challenging in the practices and we're not waiting till the last minute to have, you have that to, in. You have yeah. to set up games that, you know, in, in our practices, there's, there's always one or two games, mm -hmm. small area games, oh, big that's games, so good. some sort of competing. Yep. Uh, and we, the kids don't know it, but we try to secretly put it in when they're absolutely gassed, when they're yeah. tired when they don't have anything left in the tank so that they have to make those decisions because you start making bad decisions when you right. get in lack of oxygen to your brain, right? And I'm not even a doctor and I know that. <laughs> um, so if you put them in that, you know, make it familiar to them, right. and it's a habit, and it's no big deal. And more times than not, I think you're going to come out on the winning end. Um, and then at the same time, the kids need to know that you're not going to always win. Oh, I love you're not going to always win. Yeah. And now you got to, love winning more than you hate losing or sorry, no hate losing more than you love winning. Um, but you got to learn how to lose, right? You got to learn how to lose. It's Absolutely. super important. And, and a lot of people, you know, you see them when they're 10 years old, 12 years old and they're crying after a loss. You're like, you know, but There's once they get to 14, more, but... 16, yes. 18, like, Hey, and they understand it's a business trip. I would agree. So for all of our viewers and our other athletes and coaches and parents out here, what would be one big takeaway if anything that you could give them? Uh, well, I think to the parents, let your kids play the games. Mm. Let them play the sport. I'm with you on that one. Let them play the sport. I know it's hard. Uh, I'm a parent. My kid plays. Yes. Um, but I've seen it. I'm going on 15 years of seeing it as a coach, and it never helps. Yeah. It never helps. Let your kid play. Let your coaches coach. Let the managers manage. Yeah. And players enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. the sport because it goes quick. So and fast. Your youth sport career, if you start when you're five and you're done with your 18, I mean, I mean, that's not very long, right? right? And it's done. And then what's next? You'll yeah. never have those youth experience again. 100%. I remember all the stuff we did in the youth, with youth hockey and traveling, the friendships. They're yes. still my friends. Hockey led me to my career that I'm doing now. Um, you know, it's a long road and everyone has a different path. And I think the path yep. is going to be different mm -hmm. for everybody, especially in the sport of hockey. Yeah. That it might be working for Johnny when he's 12, but the... 14 year old yeah. Johnny might struggle cause he grew into his body. Um, right. and there's different routes and you might not make a team when you're 12, but you might right. make it when you're 14, then you might be in the NHL. Absolutely. Yep. I'm with you on that one. What about for our coaches? What do you got for them? Stay current. Ooh, that's Stay good. current. Um, know what's going on with these kids. No, yes. get to know them. Um, have fun with it. Be silly. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't have to be all business. Um, but make sure they respect you have rules. Absolutely. Have guidelines, make silly things. You know, in hockey, a big part of hockey is you never let your jersey hit the ground. Ooh, 
And um, because it shows your, it's your logo, right? Yeah. We're the Texas Junior Stars. If that logo ever hits the ground, yeah, you're disrespecting our association. Guess mm-hmm. what? You're also disrespecting the Texas Stars, who are the American Hockey League affiliate yeah. of the Dallas Stars. So there's a trickle down effect. Oh, I like that. Um, That's so good. Yeah. It's I a great it. sport. Hockey is a great sport for um, just raising. I feel like it just raises more than any other sport. It just raises good people with, you you watch an NHL interview yeah on TV during the Stanley Cup playoffs and it's there's never me or I it's our mm-hmm. team and you know That's if so a goalie true. had a bad game he's he let you know he let down the team it's never me 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 and right. you watch other sports you hear a lot of me and yep. hockey's just different I love all sports yeah I'm not up here saying I don't like sports but <laughs> hockey is very much you don't win without having a good team it's true. not you can't have, you know, the NBA is famous now for having a big three. Yep. You could have a big three in the NHL and, and not even make Instant. the playoffs. Right. Yep. So it's a very, very important team sport where, um, you know, you got to have camaraderie. Yeah. The Stanley Cup is the hardest trophy in all of sports to win, I still believe. You got to win 16 games. Um, Dang. And you could play as many, I think, as 28, something like I'm terrible at math. But. <laughs> Um, and NHLers say a, a Stanley Cup playoff victory to yeah. win the ultimate Stanley Cup is like a season and a half of the regular season. Wow. It's insane. That is a lot. Yeah. How can people find the Texas Junior Stars? Uh, well, you can. We got a website, austinmetrohockey.org. Uh, we play at the crossover in Chaparral Ice. It's a beautiful facility. Yep. And uh, uh, we're on social media, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, what's the handle? Great question. I don't know those. Okay. I don't know those. We'll, we'll put it on we'll some it website. On. I'm sure. There you go. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you. It's been an honor today to be able to have you in studio with us and be Thanks able to pick me. your brain about coaching. Let's do it again sometime. Yes.